Let's talk about sales tax today. Some people come to me and ask if they owe sales tax when they do internet sales. It depends. So, what is sales in use tax? Use tax is basically similar to sales tax. So, for example, so not all the state have use tax, but some of the state they do, such as California. In California, if you go out and buy um, taxable items, buy a, a tangible personal prop uh, property, such as buying a, a desk for your office, uh, sales tax would kick in. So the seller will collect sales tax from you, and then turn around will pay to the state. And what is use tax? Use tax happen when you go to a state. Other states which have no sales tax, you purchase item and bring it back to California to use, and that you will subject to use tax of the item. So now, why should we care? And what is the difference between sales tax and income tax? So, sales tax basically is a percentage of your gross sales, when income tax is a percentage of your net income. Net taxable income. For example, if you have one thousand dollar sales, you sell one thousand dollars. So you're supposed to collect a percentage of that one thousand dollar as sales tax and turn ar- turn around and remit to the state. And for income tax, let's say you have one thousand dollar sales, but you spend eight hundred dollar in order for you to make that sales. And the net income you have, taxable income, net taxable income is only two hundred dollar. So you're gonna use that two hundred dollar times the income tax rate. And why is that important for sales tax? Why do we need to pay attention to that? Because sales tax is personal liability. It can be a personal liability, meaning that if you're the owner of the company. Uh, you're the seller, and you did not collect sales tax, and that liability could potentially become personal, meaning you will eventually own the liability. You will have to pay the tax to the state. And to sometimes you have、uh, wholesale, wholesale which is not taxable in most of the state, if not all, then you suppose collect a copy of the tax. Exam certificate from the buyer, so that is a record keeping. So make sure you have the record、uh, on file just in case there's an audit. So、uh, there are a lot of audit going on right now.、Uh, it has been audit not only right now that、uh, some some of the taxpayer are in trouble because they they don't have the record to prove that the ta-、um, the sales is tax exempted. And in that case, when、uh, there's an audit finding, you miss some of the sales tax collection, then you can potentially、uh, subject to penalty and interest. So, what is the sales tax rate? Sales tax rate can be varies based on states. So, it's mainly governed by state at the state level, and you also have jurisdiction. They also add a certain percentage sometimes. So, an an average is probably five point six percent, and some of the state have higher sales, and some of the state doesn't even. Some of the state uh, don't have uh, the states don't have sales tax, such as Alaska and Delaware, Montana, New Hampshire, and Oregon. So. And we、we'll、mention about、uh, use tax. Let's say a lot of people go to Oregon. Shopping because they don't have、uh, sales tax. Let's say you go there and buy expensive purse, and then you take it back to、uh, a state would have who has use tax such as California. That means you are actually subject to use tax for the purse you purchase for the sales tax you did not pay in another state. So. How do I know when I subject to sales tax, especially when I do internet sales? In the past, 
when we say we, we use a before and after. So the cutoff time is 2018. Uh, in 2018, there was a court case between South Dakota and Wayfair uh, about internet sales, about like uh, remote sales. So that that actually changed how most of the state tax on uh, sales. Before, for many years, the determination is based on three things: people, offices, and property. So if you have people, you have offices, or you have property, including inventory, uh, in any state, you trigger sales tax in those states. So we call that as a physical presence, meaning you physically get into the state and do business in the state. So that could create a nexus and may require you to register with the state to do business in this state and also for tax filing, sales tax and also income tax. But we focus on sales tax today. So after the court case between uh, South Dakota and Wayfair ca uh, the Wayfair case, uh, the Supreme Court actually permitted possibility that economic presence can create sales and use tax nexus. What is economic presence? Economic presence meaning that you don't have to physically get into that state in order for you to uh, trigger that nexus, trigger that requirement. So e economically, if you have enough sales, enough transactions sell to that state, that can create the economic presence and the state can require you to register with them to do business in their state, to sell product into their state, and also uh, to pay, uh, collect sales tax, um, on the, on the, uh, collect sales tax and remit the tax to the state. So the South Dakota and Wayfair case was, the threshold was $100,000 in sales of goods into the state and or 200 or more separate transactions into the state. So it's actually, that amount is actually very, very, very low. That's why uh, for people who do a lot of internet sales, gotta be careful. So pay attention to this. Now, what caused the physical nexus? A physical nexus, uh, we kind of touched it earlier. So here has some example. So for whatever reason, you do a business in a state and they require you to uh, obtain a business registration, get a business license or some other licensing you have to get before you sell to that state that trigger your physical nexus. And you have a not necessary employee, you have you hire a contractor, a consultant to get into certain state and to uh, sign a sales contract, meaning you try to get sales from that state, and you go there for a trade show, or uh, that trigger the nexus, or you have your company truck, a van, and go into the state and deliver goods. That means you have your footprint into the state, or you have salespeople go in there and to do maintenance service repair, or you ship a container there and the container gonna come back to you so it's a returnable container or you use a third-party distributor that could create the uh, nexus uh, one example is amazon we can we can talk about that later or you go to a trade show so you go to a trade show at the trade show you probably get some sales order that trigger the nexus or you go there and meet with supplier and any, any, any action you try to get sales and you have people have your footprint into that state, meaning that that create a physical nexus. Then you need to take a look, take a closer look if you need to file registration and collect sales tax and remit sales tax to the state. Now, a lot of people do Amazon sales. To use the Amazon fulfillment. 
So Amazon have warehouse, has warehouses in many states. So now you need to find out where is your inventory. How can you find out? So can you direct Amazon to fulfill、uh, from certain distribution center? Can you direct Amazon to fulfill from certain distribution center? People ask that question quite often, so it doesn't hurt to go call your sales rep or or your representative. So that documentation and document document your finding that is really important. And to some of the state, not only selling tangible goods is taxable,、uh, services on the internet is also taxable. So. The tax services provided over internet. So Hawaii, South Dakota,、uh, New Mexico, and、uh, West Virginia. Those are the state they collect sales tax、uh, for for services over the internet. So commonly taxed services including、uh, tax communication and utilities,、uh, long、uh, lodging, printing,、um, also laundry services, repair to. Tangible personal property. So, lodging, do they、uh, collect sales tax? So, yeah, when you go to hotel, take a look of the hotel bill. <laughs> so now, is the shipping and handling charges they subject to sales tax?、Uh, you gotta be a little careful over here. So, if you pre-charge a fixed amount. For shipping and handling charges, those could likely could be likely subject to、uh, sales tax because if you charge pre charge to twenty dollar for handling, packaging, processing, because they can add that into、uh, can be considered as part of the、uh, the product is the cost of the product. However, if you pass through a freight out cost, that will not be subject to the sales tax. Because let's say, for example, you ship a product for ten dollars, and UPS charge nine dollar ninety nine cents. You just basically pass that nine dollar ninety nine cents to the customer, and that in that case is not、uh, not pre charge, so is not considered as、uh, add to the value of the goods, so it's not taxable. So other items you need to pay attention to is the discount. Discount is a reduction of the price or the form of the payment, and coupon and tips and trade in. So in this, if you have these items, make sure that the the value is over certain amount. You make sure you look at the requirement from each state. Wayfair in 2018, we talk about that. After 2018,、uh, right here we have some example of the states which. Even though you did not get into the state, you still,、uh, if you sell to those states, and the sales and the transaction amount over certain threshold, you are subject to sales tax. In those、uh, sales tax reporting or registration in those states, so make sure you take a look of your sales、uh, periodically. See if you over that limit and、uh, what is the exposure you have. Because for now, at least forty-two、uh, of the forty-five states have officially done something regarding the economic nexus, and a, a lot of states, thirty-six states, already affected. So that is something that we need to pay attention to. Then what now? If I have myself over. Certain threshold. What should we do? So this is what you need to. What you not need to do. I think is a good practice to do if you have question regarding whether you owe sales tax. So find out the following: Where have you left physical footprint? So what is physical footprint? Meaning you enter the state by any physical form. You have employee going there. You have sales people get into the state. To、uh, to obtain sales, or you have maintenance people go into the stay. Like the second item right here, activities done on your behalf by non-employee.、Uh, that is the consultant or the third party、um, 
uh, contractor, those are the non-employee. And then also you can find a Nexus questionnaire, uh, download from online, to track your activities in different states. So when the state come in and challenge you, so you have the record to show them that, no, we don't have the Nexus in that state. Uh, we don't have physical presence or we don't have economic uh, nexus. We didn't pass the economic nexus. So that will save you a lot of headache. Now, what else you can do? So if you, every quarter, you take a look of your sales total by state. If you find out that some of the state the sales or transaction into a certain state is over the, uh, the threshold for the state, the requirement by the state. Then, next one is, well, do I need to register with the state? Go into the state website and take a look at that. And then, if you do, then take a look of your sales. Are those uh, taxable sales or wholesale or exempt sales? Because every state have different requirements. So maybe most of them are not even taxable. So even though your amount, the total amount is over the threshold and the transaction is over the threshold, but you mainly do wholesale or certain uh, exempt sale. So make sure you get the documentation exemption certificate from your customer on file. So in the future, when the state come in to challenge you, you have support. And if for certain state you know that you need to collect and you need to remit the tax, and just make sure that you have the procedure in place so then you don't become uh, personally liable for the sales tax eventually. So now, it's pretty straightforward, a lot of information. And so, so in summary, a few things. One is figure out if you have physical nexus and where you get in, you have a uh, footprint, meaning you have people sent into the state and you have trucks, you have office, you have merchandise, and then find out how much, how much is the exposure. So if you miss something and what is next? And uh, did you, you have enough sales, you have people in there, but you did not report, then you need to take a look what is the exposure and do you really owe the state tax? The second one is economic nexus. So every quarter, pull out a record and see how much sales by state and how much transaction you have online to each state. Uh, if you meet the economic nexus requirement by uh, state and go into the state, or maybe you can even make a phone call and talk to them and see if you require to uh, collect and remit the tax. So the steps is once you find out, then next one is just registration and make sure you are in compliance. Registration with the state and collect the sales and use tax and remit to the state and then file the sales and use tax return. So uh, pretty much about that. So if you have any question, you can leave a question to us. Uh, we try our best to answer your question and we also uh, let us know what else you want to find out, and uh, we can also talk about it. Thank you very much.